the Ministry of Education and Training, Vietnam Education Publishing House and Pearson Education. English 11, Book 1, written by Hoàng Văn Vân, Phan Hà, Hoàng Thị Hồng Hải, Hoàng Thị Xuân Hoa, Kiều Thị Thu Hương, Vũ Thị Lan, Đào Ngọc Lộc, Trung Thế Quang, with cooperation from David K. This CD is produced by Educational Materials Joint Stock Company and recorded by Pearson Education. Unit 1 The Generation Gap Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and read Do you visit your grandparents every weekend? Well, just my mum's parents. But I don't need to visit my other grandparents. You see, I live in a big house with my dad's parents and my uncle's family. I see. You're part of an extended family then. You certainly have more fun than me. I live in a nuclear family with just my parents and my younger brother. That's right. I think my parents are luckier than others because they don't have to worry about childcare. My sister and I also learn a lot of skills from my grandmother. So, are there any problems between the generations in your family? You mean a generation gap? Well, there are. My grandma has her own beliefs about things like hairstyles, appearance and table manners. She thinks women must do all the housework, while my parents believe family members should share the chores. What about your grandpa? He is the most conservative person in my family. He thinks that I ought to get a job in a state-owned organisation after university. He says I should follow in his footsteps. Oh, really? Do your parents share his viewpoints? No, they don't. My parents are more open-minded. They just give us advice, but they never try to impose their decisions on us. You mean there's no generation gap between you and your parents? Well... Sometimes conflicts do happen, but we sit together and discuss. We all think we need to understand each other better. Lucky you. You must be so happy to have such a great relationship with your parents. Thank you. Unit 1 Language Pronunciation Activity 1 Listen and repeat these sentences. Pay attention to the stressed words with the mark before the stressed syllables. 1. If you can identify your differences with your parents, you can have a good relationship. 2. You should be respectful when discussing any areas of disagreement. 3. Take time to listen to your parents' opinions and ask them to listen to yours. 4. Being rude to your parents won't convince them you're right. This can have the opposite effect. 5. How can parents support their children through the bad times? Unit 1 Language Pronunciation Activity 2 Are the words in bold stressed or unstressed? Listen and check. 
Practice reading the conversations in pairs. One. When did you start to help your parents with housework? I don't remember exactly when I started to help them. Perhaps at the age of five or six. Two. These shoes look really cool. Would you like to try them on? No, I don't like them. I like those over there. Three. Do you think parents are the best teachers? Yes, I do. They are more mature and experienced, so they will always give us the best advice. Unit one. Skills. Listening. Activity three. Listen to the conversation. Decide if the following sentences are true or false. You look upset, Linda. What's the matter? Nothing serious. Just my parents keep complaining about my clothes. Oh, why don't they like them? They think my trousers are too skinny. And my top's too tight. They don't like my sparkling clothes or high heels. They want me to wear more casual stuff, such as jeans and t-shirts. Well, it depends on where you're going. If you're going to a party, you could dress up, but I don't think you should wear flashy clothes every day. But I really want to look more elegant and fashionable. Well, have you thought about the costs? Perhaps your parents can't afford to buy expensive clothes. Maybe you're right. What about you? Do you get into conflict with your parents? Not really, but they forbid me to play computer games. Sounds bad. What's wrong with computer games? They think all computer games are useless. They want me to use my computer for more useful stuff. But there are some positive benefits of playing computer games. Yes, there are. I can read faster because I can concentrate more. Playing computer games after school also helps me to relax after a hard day. But your parents may worry about your eyesight if you look at the computer screen for a long time. Yes, they probably worry about it and want me to have a healthier lifestyle with more outdoor activities. That's right. I think you need to tell your parents that you agree with them and explain the benefits of computer games. That's a good idea. I hope my parents understand that. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for your advice too. Unit one. Skills. Listening. Activity four. Listen to the conversation again, and choose the best answer: A, B, or C. You look upset, Linda. What's the matter? Nothing serious. Just my parents keep complaining about my clothes. Oh, why don't they like them? They think my trousers are too skinny and my top's too tight. They don't like my sparkling clothes or high heels. They want me to wear more casual stuff, such as jeans and t-shirts. Well, it depends on where you're going. If you're going to a party, you could dress up. But I don't think you should wear flashy clothes every day. But I really want to look more elegant and fashionable. Well, have you thought about the costs? Perhaps your parents can't afford to buy expensive clothes. Maybe you're right. What about you? Do you get into conflict with your parents? Not really, but they forbid me to play computer games. Sounds bad. What's wrong with computer games? They think all computer games are useless. They want me to use my computer for more useful stuff. But there are some positive benefits of playing computer games. Yes, there are. I can read faster because I can concentrate more. Playing computer games after school also helps me to relax after a hard day. But your parents may worry about your eyesight if you look at the computer screen for a long time. Yes, they probably worry about it. And want me to have a healthier lifestyle with more outdoor activities. That's right. I think you need to tell your parents that you agree with them, and explain the benefits of computer games. That's a good idea.
I hope my parents understand that. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for your advice too. Unit one. Looking back. Pronunciation. Activity one. Identify the stressed words and put a stress mark before their stressed syllables in the following statements. Listen and check your answers. One. Tim and his parents often argue about what time he should come home. Two. Money is a source of conflict for many families. Three. Susan's parents want her to do well in school, and if that doesn't happen, her parents get angry, so she gets worried. Four. Kate's parents often complain that she doesn't help clean the house. Unit one. Looking back. Pronunciation. Activity two. Identify the stressed words and put a stress mark before their stress syllables. Listen and check your answers. One. At what age were you allowed to stay at home alone? I don't remember exactly. I think it was when I was nine or ten. Two. These jeans look really cool. Would you like to try them on? No, I don't like them. I like those over there. Three. Do you think life is safer in the countryside? Yes, I do. It's also cleaner. Unit two. Relationships. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Okay. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Who was that? Oh, one of my classmates, Granny. It was Nam that called you again. Right? Yes, he called about our grammar homework. You shouldn't talk to him all the time. I don't want to be too strict with you, but I think you're too young to start a relationship with a boy. Granny, we're just friends, and he's not my boyfriend. Well, I'm afraid there's no real friendship between a boy and a girl. You know, my. I'm worried you'll get involved in a romantic relationship sooner or later. Don't worry, Granny. Nam and my other friends are good students. We just talk about schoolwork and things like that. I don't know why boys and girls are allowed to be in the same school nowadays. When I was your age, we went to single sex schools. Didn't you feel bored? Of course not. We were like one big family. I had some very close friends. It's the same in my school. In my class, we're all good friends and help each other. All my classmates are very kind, caring, and sympathetic. Sounds good, but listen, my. I hope you're just friends with the boys. It's your studies that you should concentrate on. I know that, Granny. Unit two. Language. Pronunciation. Activity two. Listen and underline what you hear, the contraction, or the full form. One. Why won't you help me with my homework? I will. I'll be with you in a minute. Two. 
You must be pleased with your test results. Yes, I am. Three. I thought he was in Hanoi today. He is in Hanoi. That's where he's calling from. Four. Here we are. This is my place. I didn't know it would take two hours to get to your house. Five. I've been to Hawaii several times. Really? That's an interesting place to visit, I suppose. Unit 2 Language Pronunciation Activity 3 Listen and repeat the exchanges in Activity 2. 1. Why won't you help me with my homework? I will. I'll be with you in a minute. 2. You must be pleased with your test results. Yes, I am. 3. I thought he was in Hanoi today. He is in Hanoi. That's where he's calling from. 4. Here we are. This is my place. I didn't know it would take two hours to get to your house. 5. I've been to Hawaii several times. Really? That's an interesting place to visit, I suppose. Unit 2 Skills Listening Activity 2 Listen to a talk show with host Vicky Holmes and guest speaker Dr Dawson. Choose the best answer to complete each statement. Welcome to our talk show with guest speaker Dr Dawson, a psychologist who will be talking about how teenagers and their parents deal with problems. Dr Dawson, most parents are worried about their children getting involved in romantic relationships. What's your opinion on this? From 15 to 19 years of age, many teenagers spend a lot of time thinking or talking about being in a relationship. So, do you mean this is part of the teen normal growth and development? Yes. Young people learn how to form safe and healthy relationships with friends, parents, teachers and romantic partners. This can prepare them for adult life. So parents should not oppose their relationships. I suppose many parents will be surprised to hear this. What's your advice for the teenagers then? Well, they should not be afraid to talk to their parents about their feelings and friendships. This can help them feel confident to discuss their relationships in the future. So you mean teenagers should listen to their parents and ask them to listen to what they are saying? Exactly. Most parents are always willing to lend an ear to what their children are saying. This is even more important when young people suffer breakups or broken hearts. They need a shoulder to cry on and a sympathetic ear. Thank you, Dr. Dawson, for your very helpful advice to teenagers and their parents. Do you have any last words for them? Parents shouldn't get very anxious when their teenage children are in a relationship. Saying strongly no will make teenagers stop speaking about their feelings. Teenagers should also listen to their parents' views and be respectful. Unit 2 Skills Listening Activity 3 Listen again. Answer the questions. Welcome to our talk show with guest speaker Dr Dawson, a psychologist who will be talking about how teenagers and their parents deal with problems. Dr 
Dr. Dawson. Most parents are worried about their children getting involved in romantic relationships. What's your opinion on this? From 15 to 19 years of age, many teenagers spend a lot of time thinking or talking about being in a relationship. So, do you mean this is part of the teen normal growth and development? Yes. Young people learn how to form safe and healthy relationships with friends, parents, teachers and romantic partners. This can prepare them for adult life, so parents should not oppose their relationships. I suppose many parents will be surprised to hear this. What's your advice for the teenagers then? Well, they should not be afraid to talk to their parents about their feelings and friendships. This can help them feel confident to discuss their relationships in the future. So you mean teenagers should listen to their parents and ask them to listen to what they are saying? Exactly. Most parents are always willing to lend an ear to what their children are saying. This is even more important when young people suffer breakups or broken hearts. They need a shoulder to cry on and a sympathetic ear. Thank you, Dr Dawson, for your very helpful advice to teenagers and their parents. Do you have any last words for them? Parents shouldn't get very anxious when their teenage children are in a relationship. Saying strongly no will make teenagers stop speaking about their feelings. Teenagers should also listen to their parents' views and be respectful. Unit 2 Communication and culture Communication Activity 1 Listen to Hum's opinions about online friends. Answer the questions. Well, there are many advantages of having online friends. First, they can be anywhere in the world so I can learn about different cultures and lifestyles. Distance does not matter, as all I need is a computer. Second, I can contact them whenever I wish, as long as they are online, and I can end the conversation easily when I have other things to do. What's more, I can save a lot of money as there'll be no dinners, parties or get-togethers. I don't have to spend money on things like food and drinks or cinema tickets. Most importantly, I can quickly end a relationship when I don't feel comfortable with the person anymore. The only thing I don't like about this kind of friendship is that sometimes I don't know for sure who these friends really are. They may not use their real names and post other people's photos. Unit 2 Looking back Pronunciation Activity 2 Listen to check your answers. 1 My teacher will phone to say if she's coming to the party. I hope she is. 2 I'm not sure if I'll pass the exam. But I am. You've worked so hard. 3. It'd be better for him to talk to his parents about his problems. He can't because he's living with his grandpa. 4. It's difficult to read your handwriting. Our teacher won't accept your paper. I hope she does. I don't have time to type it. Unit 3 Becoming Independent Getting Started Activity 1 Listen and read
I can see that you and Huang Min have become close friends, Lan. We have. I really like him because he doesn't rely on other people for help and isn't influenced by other people's opinions. I see. So he's very independent. Yes, he's also a very responsible student. He always completes his tasks on time, and never needs to be reminded about assignments and other schoolwork. Right. He's also reliable. Last week, our group worked on a project, and he was assigned the most difficult part of it. He tried very hard and did it well. It's good to have a friend you can rely on. He seems very determined. He is. Last month we were given a very hard maths problem. While most of us gave up, he spent the whole night on it and solved it in the end. That's amazing. Yeah, even our maths teacher was very surprised to read his answer. Another good thing about him is that he's self-reliant. He always tries to find solutions to his problems and seldom needs help from others. His parents must be really pleased to have such a son. Of course, he also helps around the house a lot, but he still has time to read, so he's well informed about what's happening around the world. It's interesting to talk to him. I'll talk to him sometime. Yes, you should. He's also very confident and decisive. He always believes in himself, and I really admire his ability to make decisions so quickly. He's a very independent person. That's great. You're lucky to have a close friend like him. Unit three. Language. Pronunciation. Activity one. Listen and repeat the following sentences, paying attention. To the linking between the words. One. He's a new student in our class. Two. He always fulfills all his tasks on time. Three. He knows a lot about life and about the world around. Four. Now. It's time for all of us to celebrate our achievements. Five. An independent person is capable of doing things by herself. Unit three. Language. Pronunciation. Activity two. Listen and link. The consonant sounds and the vowel sounds. Then, practice reading the sentences. One. Line up and wait until I tell you what to do. Two. My phone number is o nine o eight seven six o four o five. Three. You could earn a lot of money if you write an interesting e-book. Four. Once upon a time, there was a frog that lived in a little pond. Five. Take a box from over there and give it to me. Unit three. Skills. Listening. Activity two. Listen to an interview on life skills, the most popular radio show for teens and parents, and match the statements with the speakers. Hello and welcome to Life Skills. The most popular radio show for teens and parents. Today, I've invited three Grade Eleven students to share with us how their parents help them to become independent. Lom, would you like to start? Hi. Well, I'm the only child, so my parents tend to be overprotective of me. 
they didn't let me do any household chores and drove me to school until I finished grade nine. However, since I was a little child, I've always been encouraged to voice my opinions. My parents even ask for my opinions before they make some important family decisions. That's great. That helps you develop self confidence. And Tuan, how do your parents help you become independent? Well, my parents focus on teaching me about responsibility. I'm given a list of responsibilities, such as doing household chores, looking after my grandparents, and my parents make sure that I fulfil all of them. If I fail, I get punished, but if I do them well, I get a reward. This keeps me motivated. Your parents seem strict, but also very fair. What about you, Mun? My parents set some limits and establish rigid rules about important issues. I have to do chores and follow a set routine. But I can make my own choices about personal things, such as clothes, books, or toys. My parents encourage me to consider all options before making my own decisions. Yes. Setting limits can teach you self discipline and keep you safe and healthy. It's also great that your parents teach you decision making skills. I hope that one day you'll be ready to leave home and live independently. Thank you so much for joining the show. Unit 3 Skills Listening Activity 3 Listen again and answer the questions. Hello and welcome to Life Skills, the most popular radio show for teens and parents. Today, I've invited three Grade 11 students to share with us how their parents help them to become independent. Lom, would you like to start? Hi. Well, I'm the only child, so my parents tend to be overprotected of me. They didn't let me do any household chores and drove me to school until I finished grade nine. However, since I was a little child, I've always been encouraged to voice my opinions. My parents even ask for my opinions before they make some important family decisions. That's great. That helps you develop self confidence. And Tuan, how do your parents help you become independent? Well, my parents focus on teaching me about responsibility. I'm given a list of responsibilities, such as doing household chores, looking after my grandparents, and my parents make sure that I fulfil all of them. If I fail, I get punished, but if I do them well, I get a reward. This keeps me motivated. Your parents seem strict, but also very fair. What about you, Mun? My parents set some limits and establish rigid rules about important issues. I have to do chores and follow a set routine. But I can make my own choices about personal things, such as clothes, books, or toys. My parents encourage me to consider all options before making my own decisions. Yes, setting limits can teach you self discipline and keep you safe and healthy. It's also great that your parents teach you decision making skills. I hope that one day you'll be ready to leave home and live independently. Thank you so much for joining the show. Unit 3 Looking back. Pronunciation. Activity 1. Listen and repeat these sentences. Then, listen again and link the final consonants and initial vowels. 1. He's a teacher of English in an urban school. 2. My brother is well informed about local issues. 3. 
Most Americans use some forms of discipline for their children. 4. The goal of American parents is to help their children to become independent. 5. Her parents even ask for her opinions before they make important decisions. Unit 3 Looking back Pronunciation Activity 2 Read the paragraph below and link the final consonants and initial vowels. Then, listen and check your answers. Being independent is being able to take care of yourself and not having to rely on anyone else. That is what many young people strive for. However, the ability to live independently does not develop naturally. You need a number of life skills to stop relying on your parents and older siblings. Review 1 Language Pronunciation Activity 3 Listen and link the final consonants and initial vowels in the sentences. Then, read them aloud. 1. Kate is a teacher of English in an upper secondary school. 2. Look at these pictures and answer my questions in English. 3. Tom used to live in his parents' house, but he's moved into a new flat with some friends. 4. Can I have a cup of apple tea? 5. Don't forget to turn off the lights when you leave after the party. Review 1. Skills Listening Activity 4 Listen to recording about relationship problems between parents and teenage children. Decide whether the following statements are true or false according to the speaker. During the teenage years, it is at times difficult for parents to talk to their children. Teenagers often seem to hate being questioned. They seem unwilling to talk about their work at school. This is a normal psychological development at this age. Although it can be hard for parents to understand, it is part of becoming independent. Teenagers are trying to be adults while they are still growing up. Young people often dislike talking if they realise their parents are trying to check up on them. Parents should find ways to talk to their teenage children about school, work and future plans, but should not push them to talk if they don't want to. Parents should also watch for danger signs. For example, some teenagers, in trying to be adults, may experiment with alcohol, drugs or smoking. It is necessary for parents to watch for any signs of different behaviour, which may be connected with these dangers, and offer help if necessary. Unit 4 Caring for those in need Getting started. Activity 1. Listen and read. Hi, what's up? Why are there so many boxes in the library? I'm preparing some Christmas gifts for secondary students with disabilities in the school we visited two months ago. These are students with various visual hearing, physical and cognitive impairments. Cognitive impairments? That's learning difficulties. I have a neighbour who is blind, 
deaf and dumb, and needs a lot of help to get around. Well, you shouldn't use words like dumb or deaf. It's disrespectful. I agree. There are so many students with a disability who have talents and skills. That's right, and we need to help them to become independent, integrate in the community, and achieve success at school. So, what are these Christmas gifts? Last month, the youth union in our school had a meeting and decided to start a special Christmas gifts campaign to collect gifts for local charities. So far, the students in our school have donated more than one hundred gifts. That's great! Can students from other schools join your campaign? Sure. A few other schools have already joined us. They have sent us textbooks, dictionaries, CD players, batteries. I have an idea for a gift: a talking pen for learning foreign languages. Great idea! What a meaningful gift! Thanks, Maria. I'll talk to my classmates and see what we can do. Unit Four. Language. Pronunciation. Activity One. Listen and repeat. Pay attention to the vowels in bold. Secondary. Deafening. Preferable. Dictionary. Frightening. Battery. History. Restaurant. Police. Library. Family. Unit Four. Language. Pronunciation. Activity Two. Listen and repeat the following sentences. Pay attention to the vowels in bold. One. Last week we discussed a visit to a secondary school. For children with disabilities. Two. They really like studying English and history. Three. I couldn't hear anything but the deafening noise of the drums. Four. Before you use this talking pen, remember to check the batteries first. Five. It would be preferable to donate Braille books, not large print books. Unit four. Skills. Listening. Activity two. Listen to a radio program about a famous youngster with a disability. And fill in the information. Welcome to Get Involved, our weekly program about inspirational young people. Today, I'll tell you the amazing story of an outstanding young person with a disability. Win Ann was born with glass bone disease, a genetic disorder causing fragile bones, and had fractured bones over thirty times. She is unable to run around like her friends, and has to use a wheelchair. Despite her disability, she always has a smile on her face. She believes that she is luckier than other people with disabilities. Because she has many supportive friends and teachers, Win Ann has been interested in singing since an early age. 
eager to join charitable campaigns, she has been using her talent to perform at Voice of Vietnam since she was eight. She has taken part in broadcasting radio messages to rural villages. She has been honoured by UNICEF as an outstanding child with disabilities. Now, as a friend of UNICEF Vietnam, she continues to inspire others and use her talent and determination to help children with disabilities. She became a success when she auditioned for the television show Vietnam's Got Talent. She immediately received national and international recognition. Her smile and kind voice will definitely continue to encourage people with disabilities to fulfil their potential. Her inspiring words are what we would like you to think about. You can do a lot of things if people believe in you and actually treat you equally. Unit 4 Skills Listening Activity 3 Listen again and complete the sentences with no more than four words or numbers. Welcome to Get Involved, our weekly programme about inspirational young people. Today, I'll tell you the amazing story of an outstanding young person with a disability. Win Ann was born with glass bone disease, a genetic disorder causing fragile bones, and had fractured bones over 30 times. She is unable to run around like her friends and has to use a wheelchair. Despite her disability, she always has a smile on her face. She believes that she is luckier than other people with disabilities because she has many supportive friends and teachers. Win Ann has been interested in singing since an early age. Eager to join charitable campaigns, she has been using her talent to perform at Voice of Vietnam since she was eight. She has taken part in broadcasting radio messages to rural villages. She has been honoured by UNICEF as an outstanding child with disabilities. Now, as a friend of UNICEF Vietnam, she continues to inspire others and use her talent and determination to help children with disabilities. She became a success when she auditioned for the television show Vietnam's Got Talent. She immediately received national and international recognition. Her smile and kind voice will definitely continue to encourage people with disabilities to fulfil their potential. Her inspiring words are what we would like you to think about. You can do a lot of things if people believe in you and actually treat you equally. Unit 4 Communication and Culture Communication Activity 1 Listen to an introduction to a charitable organisation. Complete the table. East Meets West was started by humanitarian Lair Lee Hayslip in 1988. Her initial aim was to help heal the wounds of war between the United States and Vietnam. Since its foundation, East Meets West has become a non-governmental organisation 
with large-scale projects in Southeast Asia and South Asia. Its programs are mainly in the fields of healthcare, education, clean water and good hygiene, and aim at helping people in Asia have better lives. In Vietnam, East Meets West has launched the Inspire Sports Program in Quang Chi Province to provide disabled people with opportunities to take part in sports with professional coaches and healthcare workers. East Meets West is also working with Vietnam Television on an international campaign called Life is Beautiful to raise awareness about the issues that disabled people are facing in the country, to raise funds to support them and to create a more positive attitude towards them. East Meets West's programmes send the message that people with disabilities, despite their limitations, can overcome difficulties to achieve success in life. Unit 4 Looking back Pronunciation Activity 1 Listen and underline the syllable with vowel elision. 1. You can look up this word in your dictionary. 2. Police are protecting people with physical disabilities. 3. We are collecting books for the local library. 4. The noise from the factory is deafening. 5. We like reading books about Vietnam history. Unit 4 Looking back Pronunciation Activity 2 Listen and tick the sentences that are read with a lesion of weak vowels. 1. This special school provides primary and secondary education. 2. This special school provides primary and secondary education. 3. The noise from that factory is quite deafening. 4. The noise from that factory is quite deafening. 5. This camera needs only one battery. 6. This camera needs only one battery. Unit 5 Being part of ASEAN Getting started Activity 1 Listen and read Dad, I'm thinking of participating in a competition on ASEAN and the ASEAN Charter. I can see that my classmates have practised answering the questions. They know a lot more and are more confident than me. Oh, is that why you look worried? I can help you. First, what is ASEAN? Well, I know that ASEAN stands for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and it was formed on August 8, 1967. Correct. How many members does it have? As of 2010, it consists of 10 member states, but may get bigger because other countries have applied to join the bloc. Well done. Do you know its aims and purposes? I know that it focuses on improving member states' economies and maintaining regional peace and stability. But Dad, how do ASEAN members help each other? Well, they do what they can. Singapore, for example, offers the Singapore Scholarship, 
and the ASEAN scholarships to students from other ASEAN countries. Thanks, Dad. I'll try to remember that. I think the ASEAN also holds sports activities like the Southeast Asian Games, the ASEAN Para Games for athletes with disabilities, and the ASEAN School Games. Good job. How about the ASEAN Charter? Do you remember its main principles? Hmm. Hold on a minute. Hmm. Is that the right to live without external interference? Yes, but there are still other principles. I suggest reading through the charter again. I'll continue quizzing you tonight after work. Great. Thanks, Dad. I'm now hoping to win a prize. Unit five. Language. Pronunciation. Activity one. Listen and repeat. One. Noi is a boy from Lao. Two. Is Noon a girl from Thailand? Three. Hanoi is Vietnam's capital city. Four. Is Ho Chi Minh City? The largest city in Vietnam. Five. Vietnam gained its independence in nineteen forty-five. Six. Was ASEAN formed on the eighth of August, nineteen sixty-seven? Unit five. Language. Pronunciation. Activity two. Listen and repeat with the correct intonation. Then, practice saying the sentences with a partner. One. My applied for the Singapore scholarship. Two. Is Tom looking for information about ASEAN? Three. Jane was invited to stay with a local family in Lao. Four. Does Kevin want to take a trip to Bali, Indonesia? Five. Kuang took many pictures of beautiful coral reefs in the Philippines. Six. Brunei joined ASEAN as its sixth member in 1984. Unit five. Skills. Speaking. Activity one. Match each country with its capital city, and listen to check your answers. One. Bandar Seri Begawan is the capital of Brunei, Darussalam. Two. The capital of Cambodia is Phnom Penh. Three. The name of Indonesia's capital is Jakarta. Four. Vientiane is the capital of Lao. Five. The capital of Malaysia is Kuala Lumpur. Six. Ni Pi Tor is the capital of Myanmar. Seven. The name of the Philippines capital is Manila. Eight. Singapore is a country as well as a capital city. Nine. Bangkok is the capital of Thailand. Ten. The capital of Vietnam is Hanoi. Unit five. 
Skills. Speaking. Activity 2. Listen to a brief introduction to an ASEAN member state and complete the text with the correct numbers. Indonesia is a country in Southeast Asia with an area of 1,904,569 square kilometres. It has a population of 237 million 424,363 people. Unit 5 Skills Listening Activity 2 Listen to a sports instructor's talk. What is he talking about? Tick the correct box. Hello everybody. Today I'd like to talk about one of the ASEAN sports activities. ASG stands for ASEAN School Games. This event is organised every year by an ASEAN member state. The organisation that supports the ASG is the ASEAN Schools Sports Council, ASSC. ASSC promotes sports activities for school students in ASEAN member states. The ASG aims to establish and strengthen friendship among ASEAN students. When participating in ASG sports events, and cultural exchanges, the ASEAN youth have a chance to learn more about the culture and history of ASEAN and its member states. They also share information and experience, which promote solidarity and mutual understanding among young people. The first ASG took place in 2009 in Thailand. Thailand finished on top of the medal table with 72 gold medals. Vietnam was second with 18 gold medals. The second ASG was organised in 2010 in Malaysia. Malaysia was first with 45 gold medals, followed by Thailand with 32. Singapore hosted the third ASG in 2011. Thailand won the Games with 29 gold medals. Singapore was second with 26. The fourth ASG was held in 2012 in Indonesia. Thailand dominated the Games again and won 38 gold medals. Indonesia was second with 33 gold medals. The fifth ASG took place in Vietnam in 2013. The host dominated the Games and finished on top of the medal table with 50 gold medals. Malaysia was second with 25. None of the teams went home empty-handed. I have more detailed information about each ASG. Just come and talk to me if you're interested. Unit 5 Skills Listening Activity 3 Listen again and decide if the statements are true or false. Hello everybody. Today I'd like to talk about one of the ASEAN sports activities. ASG stands for ASEAN School Games. This event is organised every year by an ASEAN member state. The organisation that supports the ASG is the ASEAN Schools Sports Council, ASSC. ASSC promotes sports activities for school students in ASEAN member states. The ASG aims to establish and strengthen 
friendship among ASEAN students. When participating in ASG sports events and cultural exchanges, the ASEAN youth have a chance to learn more about the culture and history of ASEAN and its member states. They also share information and experience, which promote solidarity and mutual understanding among young people. The first ASG took place in 2009 in Thailand. Thailand finished on top of the medal table with 72 gold medals. Vietnam was second with 18 gold medals. The second ASG was organised in 2010 in Malaysia. Malaysia was first with 45 gold medals, followed by Thailand with 32. Singapore hosted the third ASG in 2011. Thailand won the Games with 29 gold medals. Singapore was second with 26. The fourth ASG was held in 2012 in Indonesia. Thailand dominated the Games again and won 38 gold medals. Indonesia was second with 33 gold medals. The fifth ASG took place in Vietnam in 2013. The host dominated the games and finished on top of the medal table with 50 gold medals. Malaysia was second with 25. None of the teams went home empty-handed. I have more detailed information about each ASG. Just come and talk to me if you're interested. Unit 5 Skills Listening Activity 4 Listen again and complete the following ASG medal table. Hello everybody. Today I'd like to talk about one of the ASEAN sports activities. ASG stands for ASEAN School Games. This event is organised every year by an ASEAN member state. The organisation that supports the ASG is the ASEAN Schools Sports Council, ASSC. ASSC promotes sports activities for school students in ASEAN member states. The ASG aims to establish and strengthen friendship among ASEAN students. When participating in ASG sports events and cultural exchanges, the ASEAN youth have a chance to learn more about the culture and history of ASEAN and its member states. They also share information and experience, which promotes solidarity and mutual understanding among young people. The first ASG took place in 2009 in Thailand. Thailand finished on top of the medal table with 72 gold medals. Vietnam was second with 18 gold medals. The second ASG was organised in 2010 in Malaysia. Malaysia was first with 45 gold medals, followed by Thailand with 32. Singapore hosted the third ASG in 2011. Thailand won the Games with 29 gold medals. Singapore was second with 26. The fourth ASG was held in 2012 in Indonesia. Thailand dominated the Games again and won 38 gold medals. Indonesia was second with 33 gold medals. The fifth ASG took place in Vietnam in 2013. The host dominated the games and finished on top of the medal table with 50 gold medals. Malaysia was second with 25. None of the teams went home empty-handed. I have more detailed information about each ASG. Just come and talk to me if you're interested. Unit 5 Looking back Pronunciation 
Listen and practice saying the following sentences. Mark the intonation, rising or falling. One. The constitution of ASEAN is the ASEAN Charter. Two. Did the Charter come into force on December 15th, 2008? Three. The Charter is a legal agreement among the ten ASEAN member states. Four. Does the Charter set out the basic guiding principles for its member states? Five. One of the Charter's principles is the right to live without an external interference. Review 2 Language Pronunciation Activity 3 Listen and circle the sentences spoken with falling intonation. Then, read them aloud. 1. Manila is the capital of the Philippines. 2. Are Malay, English and Tamil used in Malaysia? 3. Tom took many pictures of beautiful islands in Halong Bay. 4. The Braille alphabet was invented by Louis Braille. 5. Have you collected the gifts for disadvantaged children? 6. Students with disabilities should be offered support to do the things they like. Review 2 Skills Listening Activity 5 Listen to the conversation between Mr Lom and his daughter Mai. Decide whether the following statements are true or false. What are you doing, Mai? It's so late. Why don't you go to bed? I'm trying to finish my essay about the different cultures in the ASEAN countries. I'll have to submit it tomorrow. Can I ask you a couple of questions, Dad? Yes, go ahead. Hope I can help. Do you know the number of people in Southeast Asia who can speak English? Quite a lot. The ASEAN region has the third largest number of English speakers after the US and UK. Really? So how many people speak English? Around 50 million, I think. Mostly in the Philippines. 50 or 15? 50. There are more and more people learning English, especially in Vietnam. So the number is probably growing. Do you know anything about the different cultures? The ASEAN countries have rich and diverse cultures. There are many ethnic groups in the region. What about Vietnam, Dad? Well, we have more than 50 ethnic groups in our country and each has its language, lifestyle and culture. I think I've got all the information I need for my essay. Thanks so much, Dad. That's all right. Finish your essay and go to bed soon. I'm afraid you'll wake up late for school tomorrow morning.